Well, welcome to FC Youth. If you haven't been welcomed yet, go ahead, find a seat wherever you're at. Find a seat, find a seat, find a seat. Find a seat. Um, I want to read to you as you're finding a seat. I'll wait for you a little bit. Some of you guys get a little distracted. I want to read to you out of the book of Deuteronomy. Everyone say Deuteronomy. Everyone say Deuteronomy. Everyone's like, Deuto, what? Deuteronomy chapter 34, verse 5 through 9. I want to read it to you just real fast. Deuteronomy chapter 34, verses 5 through 9. This is what it says. It says, so Moses, everyone say Moses. Everyone say Moses. Everyone say Moses. The servant of the Lord died. Everyone say died. Come on, say, come on. Can you guys just entertain me just for a little bit? Say died. died. Say died. died. So Moses died. This is what it says, uh, there in the land of Moab, some say Moab, some say Moab, I'm going to go Moab, according to the word of the Lord, and he buried him in the valley of the land of Moab, opposite of Bethpor. But no one knows the place, everyone say no one, no one knows the place he was buried to this day. Moses was 120, everyone say 120, everyone say 120, 120 years old when he died, his eyes undimmed and his vigor unabated. And the people of Israel wept for Moses in the plains of Moab. Everyone say Moab. Moab or Moab, however you want to say it. I don't care. Moab or Moab. Uh, 30 days. Everyone say 30. 30. Everyone say 30. 30. Look at the person behind you and say 15 times 2. Everyone say 30. 30. 30 days. Then the days of weeping and mourning for Moses were ended. Everyone say ended. And Joshua. Everyone say Joshua. Not me, Joshua, in the Old Testament. Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom, and Moses had laid his hands on him. Come on, let's pray one more time. God, we come before you so thankful for who you are. God, we're so thankful that you're faithful in every single season. God, I pray tonight our hearts, our minds, and our souls would be open to you and to you alone. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen, amen and amen. How, how many of you guys, by a show of hands, have ever done anything stupid? All right. Fair amount of us. Now, take, take a journey with me real quick. How many of you guys are over the age of 15? Over the age of 15. All right, so some of you guys are going to catch this real quick. For those of us who are over the age of, of 15, just for a moment, have you ever thought to yourself, you look back at, like, some of the things you did, and you're like, why in the world would I do that? Anybody? Any of us? Some of you guys haven't hit that spot yet. You're like, I'm just turning 15. I haven't thought that yet. I think back to my childhood, not only childhood, but like teens, early teens. I think back to all of it, and I think to myself, why in the world, Josh, would you throw rocks at cars? Everyone's like, wait, what? Rocks at cars? Who are you? Like, anybody else do anything like crazy, like just stupid? Okay, all of us have. Some of you guys like are still in that stage, doing it all the time. It's great. It's like, all right, chill, bro. Um, I remember there was this, this game that we used to play, and, and like I said, I haven't said this, but I'm from Washington, so I don't know if our games are up there are the same as your games down here. Um, now, raise your hand if you've ever heard of this game, Ding Dong Ditch. Everyone's like, oh, yep, did it yesterday. It was great. It's like, wait, what? But, but I, I remember really clearly, this is a game that we would play on a consistent basis, all right? Now, some of you guys are like, Ding Dong, what? What is, what is it? Very simple. This is what happens. You, your crew, you're together, you're doing your thing, you're living your life, you're playing, you're just hanging out, doing whatever. Like you might have just played basketball. On the way home, you're walking home, maybe you're not walking home, maybe you're rolling, I don't know what you're doing. Um, but you walk up and you find a house, you walk up, you ring the doorbell. Now some of you guys who've never heard this game are going to think this is the stupid thing I've ever heard. You ring the doorbell, you run away. It's that simple. You ring the doorbell, you run away. Now there is something that happens really exciting in between the runaway. You ring it. And it's like the rush of adrenaline comes over you like, this is the greatest moment of my entire life as you're running away. Now, I'm not encouraging by any means ding-dong ditching. Don't go do it. If you're doing it, I wouldn't recommend it, and I'll tell you why. There was one time where me and my friends, it was me, this guy named Aiden, and this guy named JJ, we were doing, we were, we were ding-dong ditching, I'll be honest, we were ding-dong ditching, we were up to no good, we were more than just, we were like doing pranks on a bunch of stuff. And we walked by this house, and my friend Aiden looks over to me, he's like, hey, bro, let's go get this house. I'm like, all right, go get it. So he, he rings the doorbell. We sprint away. We run, and we kind of circle the neighborhood. On the way back, he looks at me, and he says, yo, bro, we should ding-dong ditch it a second time. Now, the, the good thing about, like, ding-dong ditching, there's an element of surprise. 
But after you do it the second time, that element is a little bit removed, okay? And so we, we walk up, we're kind of like sneaking. It's, it's not quite super late at night, but it's kind of late. And so we're, we're, we kind of like sneak up. He rings the door. We sprint away. Now this guy opens up the door, starts chasing after us, stops in his driveway, and we're like, all right, got this guy. So we circle around again. My, my friend Aiden looks over to me. He says, hey, bro, let's ding dong ditch it a third time. I said, a th- third time? Huh. I, I, I'll be honest. I feel like the story isn't true because I was not this tall. I was probably right here. <laughs> I'll just be honest. I was short. I say, a, a, a third time? He says, yup, a third time. I said, hey, bro, you go do it. He says, no, 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 no. I did it the first two times. It's your turn. Have you ever been like in a moment where your friend says something to you and you don't want to do it, but like not only did this friend say it, now JJ's chiming in. He's like, yeah, he did it the first two times. You go do it. I'm like, JJ, you haven't done a thing. You're not part of this. Aiden, you go do it. He says, nah, bro, you, you, you got it. And I was like, I don't think I do. He says, you do. And I said, all right, let's go. So I start walking up. Now, like I said, it's not the first time. It's not the second time. It is now the third time. I'm like kind of like, I'll be honest. I was, you know, like you're trying to hold it together on the outside. And the inside, you're a little nervous. I'm like shaking in my soul. But like outside, I'm like, yeah, bro, third time. Easy, all day. I got this all day. All, oh, my God. Is, he gonna, is this guy waiting for me? So I'm like nervous internally. I'm walking up to the door. And as I get up, there's something a little off. I don't know if you guys have noticed this. Underneath doors, you can kind of see um, if, if someone's there or not. Like you can see because of the light behind them, you can see there's two feet in front if there's two shadows. Some of you guys are like, you can see. Yeah, you can. If you look below a door, you see two, two shadows. Someone may be there. So I'm, I walk up, I see like, oh, he might be, right? He might, he might be right behind that door. So I'm like, but third time. I got this all day, right? I'm like getting a little bit closer, a little closer. Now I can kind of see the shadows move a little bit. And I said, he is for sure right there. I lean over and I'm not, I'm not kidding you. There's like a, oh, there's like a position you take, left foot open, right foot forward, ring with, with right hand because you need to turn and run. It's, it's quick. See that? It's just motion. It's fast. So I'm ready to go, okay? I reached for before my finger got to the doorbell. I kid you, I promise you. Some of you guys, you think you know where this story's going. I, this was crazy. Some of you guys think you know what's about to happen. You have no idea. <laughs> like, you like, whoa, this is about to go wild. <laughs> I'm right here, okay? Ready? Bye. I'm gone, okay? I'm ready to roll. But let me give you a side note right here. There's a hedge behind me because he had like the hedges. Hedges right here, okay? He had one of those. And like I said, I'm a little shorter. So it was more, it, was, it wasn't like a step over. It was like a, like we really got to go, you know? <laughs> right here, ready to roll. I'm going to ring the doorbell. As I'm on my way to ring the doorbell. Some of you guys still think you know what's about to happen. You don't. I'm going to ring it before my finger touches. The door opens. Some of you guys are like, no, not the door. Door opens. All I see is a sword. I'm being dead serious. I promise you. A sword, like right here. I click the doorbell. The sword now proceeds to start going down. I click the doorbell. I turn, okay? I, like I said, short guy had, I couldn't just hurdle it. Couldn't just hurdle the hedge. I dive straight over the hedge. I do like a perfect roll. Like almost like I, I had planned to do the roll. As I am now getting up back onto my feet, I step and I look over my shoulder. This man, with a sword in his hand, jumped his own hedge and is now chasing me. I said, oh my goodness. I, I hook a hard right onto the street. Just, I just pivot quick. I'm now sprinting down the street. This man is not stopping. He is, this is a grown adult sprinting after me down the street with a sword. I'm like, oh my, now my friends, 
Aiden, JJ, they were there. They were like on the sidewalk waving. They saw the sword. They saw the man. They just sprinted. They, they left me. They left me. They just left me. Now, luckily, I was quick, quick on my feet, ready to roll. I sprinted as fast as I could. This guy's chasing after me. Finally, I'm not going to say my cardio was better or my speed was faster. Eventually, I evaded the attacker, made my way to my friends. <laughs> but I remember I, I rolled to my friends, and I'm like, hey, you guys ever been dished before? Just a few of us. I'm like, hey, y'all left me. And he's like, bro, I did not see that coming. I was like, no, duh, none of us saw that coming. There's not one of us here who thought, you know what, let's go ding dong ditch this guy for the third time. We cannot wait for him to pull a sword out and just chase after us. Like, I can't wait, right? That's not what happened. All of us were like, no, none of us expected this to occur. Now, how many of you guys in your childhood, in your childhood had something unexpected happen because you did something stupid? Yep, all of us raise our hand. Some of you guys are thinking about that moment right now. But there are several times in my childhood where something um, unexpected occurred because of what I did. But then there's also those moments where something unexpected happened, and it's not because of anything I did. Like, I had no control over the situation, but something still unexpected occurred. And what I've noticed is, is in life, a lot of times these unexpected moments aren't so humorous, are they? Like, it's funny to think about me at 13 getting chased at, with a sword at, like, approximately five feet, one inch. Like, that's kind of funny to think about. But a lot of times, these unexpected situations aren't so humorous. A lot of times, these unexpected situations are the cause of the trauma that many of us live with today. A lot of times, these unexpected situations are the, the precursor to the insecurities we have or the doubts that we have. A lot of times, these unexpected situations are the very reason why many of us are in this room tonight feeling like, man, you know what? Life, it's really hard. You know what? I thought I could see a lot of this coming. I thought I had these plans, these ideas about what my future would look like. But at 14, 15, 16, 17 years old, what I now know is this. The only thing I can expect is that life is unpredictable. And I'll never be able to fully understand what's going to happen before it happens. And I feel like a lot of us, we live in this sense of being tossed back and forth between what we thought would occur and what actually occurs, what we thought would occur and what actually occurs. And many of us tonight are in a very unique space because the things that are unexpected oftentimes lead to the trauma that we have. And when we do not deal with the unexpected situations that unfold in our life, oftentimes what we get is the residual effect years later. And so what happened when you were seven, eight years old and it went undealt with, led to where you are today. The things that happened when you were 10, 15, 18 years old, those things that went undealt with, now are leading you into a place today. So what do we do with these, these unexpected moments? What do we do when life happens and we can't control it, we can't predict it? What, what do you and I do when these moments unfold in life? What, 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 do, we, what do we do? You know, I noticed in Deuteronomy chapter 34 that they're facing the exact same scenario where something unexpected happens. Deuteronomy chapter 34, verse 5, it paints us a picture of something that they didn't, you know, wake up one morning thinking to themselves, you know what, I can't wait to happen. I can't wait for our leader to vanish immediately. They didn't wake up one day thinking, you know what, I came up with like this idea and I can't wait for next Tuesday, Moses, just to go out into this mountain and never come Back. No, 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 that's not what happened by any means. You see, Israel, they are facing a very unpredictable, unexpected situation. And I think for you and for me, what we can do is we can look at this situation as it unfolds and we can begin to learn and process through how do you and I deal with these very unexpected, unpredictable, yet very emotional and traumatic experiences that occur in our life. Deuteronomy chapter 34 shows us a story of Moses disappearing. But in order for us to fully understand what's occurring, we have to look back 40 years earlier. Moses, yes, Moses, steps into leadership over Israel, leads them through an array of different situations and trials, parts the Red Sea, walks through it, leads them into wandering. Into fam there's, there's all these moments, these, these pinnacle moments in their life that he is leading them through 
And then one day in Deuteronomy chapter 34, verse 5, what we see is this. After 40 years of leadership, Moses goes up to this mountain, has a conversation with God, passes away. After 40 years, dead. He was leading, pioneering. After 40 years, gone. Tonight what I know is, is there's some of us that have been maybe in a similar situation as Israel. And what do I mean by that? It's not that we have been following somebody for 40 years. Many of us are not, not 40 years by any means. Some of us aren't even half the age of 40. But tonight, this is what I know. There's a lot of us who can relate to this feeling of something unexpected occurring and us not knowing how to respond. Where we thought, you know what, I thought, I thought my family was going to be here forever. I thought we were going to be one loving family. And then all of a sudden, divorce. We're stricken by emotion. We're overwhelmed. We're like, wait, wait I thought mom and dad, they loved each other. And then we start being introspective like, did I, did I cause it? And we don't know what to do in this unexpected moment. Maybe for us it isn't divorce. Maybe for us it's cancer where our parents come home and they're like, hey, I got to tell you about this report. I just got news that my body is overcome with cancer. And you're sitting there hearing the news of your parent and you're, you don't know what to do. There's this emotion that overrodes your mind. There's emotion that consumes your very being and you don't know what to do because of the unexpected situation that unfolded. And I think a lot of us, we find ourselves in this place of these emotions beginning to overtake us. And I think that's exactly how Israel would have felt in Deuteronomy chapter 34. They would have felt like, are, God, are you, are, you, are you kidding me? God, are you, are you serious right now? Moses, couldn't you have just taken anyone else? Mo, are you, are, God, are you kidding me? We've been following him for 40 years. That's what we're used to. His voice is what we're used to. God, are you, are you kidding me? Why? And I think a lot of times in these unexpected situations, rightly so, this question of why begins to become so permanent and perpetuating in our life where we just keep asking why, why, why. And many of us lose sleep over this exact question, laying in our bed at night thinking to ourselves, why? Why God? Why me? Why them? Why us? Why? And this emotion, we're overwhelmed with why, why, why? Tonight, what I believe is, is in Deuteronomy chapter 34, there's three things that we learn on how to handle these situations. The first thing I think we notice is, is there had to be this ability in Israel to learn what it looks like to let go. They had to just, they had to let go. And it's not like pretending it's not there, because I think a lot of times as it pertains to letting go, we think if I just let go and just like pretend like it never happened, then I, then I get to move on. But there was this ability within Israel to, to let go of what they've been holding on to for a long time. And what do I mean by that? You see, they've been, they've been following Moses for 40 years. Moses dies, and they had to learn how to let go of that of which they've been following for 40 years. And what becomes really difficult is this, is for us as young people to learn to let go of that which we've been following for a long, long time. How do we let go of the insecurity that's been consuming us for years? How do we let go of the doubt that has stricken our mind for years? How do we let go of the pain that we consistently felt for years? And what happens is, is we get so consumed by the longevity of the trial that we forget that just because it's happened for a long time doesn't mean it has to happen forever. Just because I've been attesting to this belief for a long time doesn't mean I have to hold on to that belief forever. And there are so many of us who have come to this conclusion that just because this is how life has been, this is how life will always be. And we get stuck in this predicament of holding on to that which we've been following for such a long time. And for many of us, we think, well, Josh, I've, I've already let go of, I've already got, let go of relationships. You've talked to me about this before. I've already, I've already let go of those friendships. You've, you've talked about this before. 
And tonight, I don't think it's just only relationships or friendships, but I think a lot of us, what we gotta learn to let go of is our thinking. Because I've seen a lot of young people move on physically, but stay tied down emotionally. Stay broken emotionally. Stay insecure emotionally. Yeah, they can move on with the biggest smile on their face, but still be absolutely broken because of what occurred in this season. You see, I don't think that you just have to move on from relationships or friendships. I don't think that there just needs to be a severance of that boyfriend or girlfriend that's toxic in your life. But I also believe that there is some thinking about yourself that is absolutely counterintuitive to what the Bible says about you. You are not born to be insecure. You are not born to be depressed. You are not born to be suicidal. You are not born that way. That is not the life that God has for you. And there has to become this moment that, yes, you may have believed it for a long time. But that does not have to be where you stay for the rest of your life there is a future God does have more and I, t I think tonight there is so many young people who are stuck in this place of thinking the same way over and over and over and over again I think tonight God is saying you don't only have to let go of relationships it's time to let go of thinking the second thing I think we notice is and I wish I wish someone would have told me this when I was your age the second thing that we notice is is that they didn't only learn how to let go, they learned what it looked like to mourn. They did. And I think this is something that isn't popular to preach about, mourning. Like, how do you be sad? Like, what's a healthy way to break? It's not popular. Because why? Because you can't get all hyped up about it. It's not popular to talk about. How, how do I process that which hurt me? How do I process that which is breaking me and for so many of us this idea or this understanding is one that evades many of our lives and so when something traumatic happens we don't know where to run we don't know where to go and so what do we do we just simply suppress 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 see tonight I think if we look at this story what we got to understand is that there was a healthy way for them to mourn and tonight I would just say two things. The first thing is when something happens, know where to go before it happens. What, what does that mean? When something traumatic happens in your life, always know that my first step is I'm not gonna run to alcohol, I'm not gonna run to drugs, I'm not gonna run to friends, I'm not gonna run to people, I'm not gonna run to Instagram, I'm not gonna run to social media, I will not go somewhere to suppress, but what I will do is my first step, my first response is I will run to the Lord. I will not run to what the world runs to, I will run to the Lord. That will be my first step. And the second one, one that is very unpopular is this, specifically at your age, many times what we won't talk about is going to counseling. A very practical step for you in things of your life. It is so important that you talk about what's going on. Don't sit and suffer in silence. Learn what it looks like to sit down in front of someone who knows how to professionally talk you through what you feel because at a young age, what happened is real. It's not fake. It won't go away the more that you age. What they did to you will not just vanish somewhere in your life. It's going to scar you and tear you up if you don't deal with it. Be okay with sitting down in front of somebody and talking about what you feel. Do not, do not just sit in silence. And this isn't just a day. Because I think a lot of times we'll think, okay, what, what, what do we do? Is it just a day where I just sit and be sad and I talk to someone about it and then I pray and then I go? No. It says they lost their leader. They sat in the place of where they lost him. And it says that they were there for 30 days. 30 days it says that they wept over the departure of their leader. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, it says that there is a season to mourn. And I think it's critical that we identify that there was a length of time, that it, it was absolutely there, but there was also a, a date where the morning ended. And I think this is so essential because for many of us, we have lived our entire lives in a state of mourning. But there has to become a moment where we decide that mourning, oh, it may have endured for the night, it may have endured for a season, 
but the joy of the Lord will restore, it will be, be brought back to me that this, does, this is just a season. It doesn't have to be my lifestyle. And third and finally, I think what we notice is this, is that they, not only did they learn how to let go, they learned how to mourn, but they finally learned what it looked like to move on. They learned what it looked like to move on. That what occurred didn't consume them for the rest of their life. It doesn't mean it didn't happen. It doesn't mean it didn't transpire and it doesn't mean it didn't hurt. What it means is, is it doesn't have to define you. What it means is, is it doesn't have to be the thing that stops you from stepping into the promised land that God has for you. Because if you look at this, where they were in Moab, was a place that was a precursor to the final destination in the land that God had promised them. And if they would have mourned for the remainder of their life, they would have never stepped into that which God had for them. And this is what I know to be so true about so many young people. What the enemy loves to do is he loves to keep you in a state of mourning so you never step into the promise. He loves to keep you in a state of brokenness so you never step into restoration. He loves to keep you consumed by what happened so you will never step into the future that God has for you. But I'm here to tell you tonight that God does indeed have more. That you don't have to stay here. You don't have to stay stuck. You don't have to stay broken. You don't have to be in this place any longer. God does have more. He does. Brokenness is not your final destination. Depression is not your final destination. Insecurity is not your final destination. Just because you've been here for a while doesn't mean you have to stay here forever. And tonight I believe so many of us been here too long we never knew how to mourn and what has begun to happen is in our absence of mourning we have begun to cope with the hurt that we feel in a lot of harmful ways we have the pain is so real and I hear story after story of self-harm perpetuating this generation specifically. And you're hurt, and you're broken, and there's this feeling of, man, I just wanna, I feel numb, and so I just wanna feel, and so what is beginning to happen is you don't know how to mourn through what happened, and so now you're beginning to cope with the pain in an array of different ways, which has now led you to a place of self-harm. And so this cycle is just one that is perpetuating you in a state of brokenness. I think tonight a lot of us have been stuck in a cycle that has perpetuated brokenness and hurt over our life. And I think tonight, the cycle that has kept us in a state of mourning, instead of brokenness, instead of hurt, I think tonight God wants to absolutely sever the cycle that keeps you stuck. That there is a cycle that has kept you in a place of brokenness. And tonight, God has freedom. God has restoration. God does have hope. He does have healing. But tonight, tonight you have to be honest. You have to be honest. can't stay here for the rest of your life. And the pain, it was real, and it did hurt. It did. But you can't be, you can't let that define you any longer. You can't. God has healing. God has restoration. has hope for you. But there's more for your life. There's more. It's not over. It's not over. God has more for you. So much more. And tonight, I think so many of us have been stuck in a place right here tonight for the first time that initial step towards restoration the initial step towards moving on the initial step I believe God wants you to take I do 
So tonight, would you do this with me? Would you all stand to your feet just for a moment? Just spread out just a little bit. Just spread out just a little bit. Give yourself some space. Tonight, with every head bowed, every eye closed. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Tonight, you would say, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready to move on. You would say, tonight, that's me. No one looking around, just between you and the Lord. You would say, that's me. I'm ready. All I want you to do right now is put both hands on your heart. Jesus, you see every hand over every heart, every student, every leader. God, I pray right now, by the power of your spirit, that there be absolute restoration. That God, from this moment, the trajectory of someone's life will be absolutely altered because of the healing, the restoration, and the freedom that God, you brought. God, I pray against the nightmares that keep people up from traumatic experiences in their childhood. God, I pray that tonight for the first time, the nightmares would be dissipated, absolutely removed. The images that perpetuate in their mind as they try to sleep, that God, they can't seem to evade in any other way by the power of the Spirit, I pray that you would absolutely sever the images that have awakened their soul for a long period of time. God, I pray over the questions that keep people awake, the reasons why, 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 why. God, I pray that in the subtleness of your spirit, you would release us from the desire to need to know in order to step towards the future that you have for us. And God, I pray over every person in this room that has coped with the hurt by self-harm. The razors that are hidden under their beds, the different things that are utilized in order to inflict pain, in order that they may feel, God, I pray right now that as you illuminate it in their mind that this isn't how they have to stay. This is not where they have to stay. That the pain doesn't make them alive. God, you make them alive. That it won't relinquish what occurred. Only you can do that. And so, God, I pray right now that the enemy's lies that have convinced them that they ought to keep hurting themselves in order to feel, God, I pray that you would absolutely eradicate it. And instead, God, I pray that you would replace it with the truth of the gospel. That God, tonight, that they would remove those things from their life, the opportunities and the open doors to harm themselves, that those would be absolutely removed. And tonight, God, they would step into the freedom and victory that you have for their life. God, I pray over the young women in this room or young men who have stepped into a place of not eating. And what has occurred is they've tried to create through this habit an image that people would appreciate. And God, in this moment, you're beginning to awaken them to the reality that in this very moment, there is absolute freedom from this, this feeling of I have to be someone in order to be accepted. But instead, God, you've already accepted them right where they are. They are beautifully and wonderfully made. They don't have to remove something from their diet in order to be accepted by society. But instead, God, you have already set them free. In Jesus' name. God, I pray that Every person in this room, every person, whether they can realize it or not, would be healed from the pain in their childhood or the pain that permeates today. Now, God, as we lift our hands and as we worship you, would you do what only you can? Would you bring freedom? 
God, would you pour out your spirit? Would you revitalize souls? God, would you set people free from the addictions, the habits, and the problems that have permeated throughout the entirety of their existence? God, in this moment, would the spirit of the Lord fall on this room? God, would you begin to move in every heart, in every mind? Lord, would your spirit begin to speak? Would you begin to refresh every single person? Now, God, as we lift our hands and as we worship you, God, would you move like only you can? Come on, FCU, let's begin to worship God tonight.
hand lifted. Come on with your heart open. Come on with a sense of belief tonight. Fix your eyes on this one truth. God is madly in love with you. Take courage, hold on, be strong. Remember where our help comes from. Don't let your heart be troubled. And hold your head up high. Don't fear no evil. And fix your eyes on this one. Hold on, be strong. Remember where our help comes from. So don't let your heart be troubled. And hold your head up high. Don't fear no evil. And fix your eyes on this one true. God is madly in love with you. Take courage, hold on. Up your own voice today. Hold your head up high. Don't fear no evil. Come on, sing it out with all your heart. Fix your eyes on this one true. Come on, fix your eyes on Jesus. So take courage, hold on, be strong. Remember where our help comes from.
you just to close your eyes we're not looking to the left or to the right but we're gonna mean this with all of our hearts we're gonna receive the courage of the Lord we're gonna see receive the love of the Lord the freedom that he has for us so let's really focus in on Jesus and let's sing this out don't let your heart be trouble hold your head up high don't fear no your eyes on this one truth. God is madly in love with you. Take courage, hold on, be strong. Remember where our hell. Come on, one last time. Don't let your heart be trouble. Hold your head up high. Don't fear no evil. Fix your eyes on Every head bowed, every eye closed. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Maybe tonight you're in this room and uh, you've never given your life to Jesus. Maybe for you, you've never had the opportunity, or maybe for you, you said yes before, but you walked away. See, tonight what I believe is, is God is not mad. God's not angry. Right now, if that's you, raise your hand. Yep, yep, yep. Yep, keep it. Yep, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Come on, can we give it up for those who said yes to Jesus tonight? Come on, I said, can we give it up for those who said yes to Jesus tonight? Come on. Whoa, with your head still bowed, your eyes still closed, repeat this after me. Say, God, thank you for sending your son to live, to die, rise again. Lord, I acknowledge, Lord, I confess that you are my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, everybody said. In Jesus' name, everybody said. Nah, nah, nah. In Jesus' name, everybody said.